Welcome back to some single wire wireless electricity experiments. And I'm prefacing this video because something very strange happened and it was after replacing this tiny coil with the larger BAC big ass coil. So I'll be keeping that footage in. Hey folks, this will be part two of the single wire transmission experiments. And it's one of those things where I'm recording it not knowing if it's going to work and hopefully it will. But in the first video we successfully transmitted 350 feet or 105 meters with this system here with a large BAC big ass coil and that went very well indeed that was great. Now the idea is to use this coil which is obviously a huge amount smaller but I'm also improving the battery situation by using it on USB. There's a little power bank there. Another feature of this is I'm going to be hopefully transmitting for a further range than 350 feet. I'm going to try and get to 500, why not? And testing out something that Fausto said. He left a comment where he was saying about the ground being excited and it's all different than people imagine with the power going over the wire. What I'm going to do is ground it at the other end and try doing so by using this, which is a car alternator, so a big mass of metal, and it'll be insulated by this foam. Now if we get transmission that way, let me answer a couple of questions. And thanks very much Fausto for suggesting the idea. So at least the concept. First of all, if you're not familiar with single wire transmission, I've now connected it to the USB power bank. And if I use my hand as a ground and pick up this LED, which is on two back-to-back -back diodes, you can see the LED is lit up. And it's just over a single wire coming from the coil. Right, so the system is right down here. And I say right down here because you can see the back of the house and the car that's being covered because of the hot weather. But you can see that we're much further away from the house than we were before. We were outside the back door. Right, so a bit of a walk now. And I've got to explain a bit of a problem because I did some mowing today. And guess who chopped through the original wire so I'm gonna to have to repair that and that's fine in a way because I have to add to it anyway uh, to get the amount of feet I needed so as you can see we're quite a ways further back and it's about the furthest distance I can do on this part of the property because the idea is we're going to go as far as you can see and further right to the northern edge of it but anyway I'll resume in a moment. Okay, we're further along now. We're past that first big pine tree. And I can't even see that other wire. Hopefully I've got enough. And maybe I'll have to patch some wires together with tape round or something. But I've mowed straight through here so you can see where we're going to go with that one single wire. And it's quite the walk. And it is also over 500 feet. I'll put below what that is in metres. But here's that tree we're coming to from the first video. And we're going straight past it. Here's the original copper piece at the side. And we're carrying on. This is really going to be some fun if it works, isn't it? all the way to the end here to the border which is the outlet from the lake so there's the lake over there and right at the very end we have this outlet that runs off down to a stream oh a very nice dragonfly but yeah if you look out how far away the house is <laughs> and then how far we have to walk to the house okay less babbling let's get this wire made now on the walk back up i realized it wasn't even connected to the red clip lead that i had got it attached to so that wire is, is probably chopped up like so much spaghetti there's the wire that i've got and i don't know if it's going to reach but we'll walk down to the end and begin unraveling it and uh, well 
I'll bring you back in a moment when it's attached and we're off for the walk back to the north end. All right, it's attached and so are several mosquitoes to me. So let's go. All right, it's going well. There's the route in front. We're nearing the big pine tree, so that'll be something if it gets that far. Well, it looks like it. Yeah, I cut the grass to make it easier for you folks to see where we're going. All right, here's how much is left. An update again. Starting to see, oh, it's running out, running about the last layer. Keep the camera going. And, boom, there. So not too far off that second tree. Right, now I'm searching for the old wire. But you can see from the ground too, um, how much it's dried out. We've had 95. Fahrenheit days for a few days now and it's all dried out so it's debatable whether the copper rod in the ground would actually work so that's why I'm going to try the alternator as a ground anyway where's this damn wire oh dear we seem to have a casualty I believe that oh no <laughs> there's the rest of me 30 gauge Oh no. Right, so it looks like it's wrapped around the wheels of the mower and I'll find some more. I found a couple of wire sources. First of all there's this, which was going to be a radio project. It's got 30 gauge on it. And then also a coil. It's a bit of a shame for this one. It's on a bobbin and I was going to do a replication of sorts of lid motors maglev bearing. I suppose I can wind it back onto it once we're done. But at each join I'll use some tape to make sure it stays insulated. Right, walk again. Connection one. Connection two. Connection three. Connection four. And there's the end of the moment. It's about another 60, 70 feet to go. I'll go up to the house and scavenge some more. Got some. Connection five. And eventually we're here with a tiny bit spare. That's the only wire left. So next thing to do, I'll go and get the alternator. Connect that to the end here, plus an LED. And wow, that's a distance. Right, so that's the alternator down here. <clears throat> now, if you never carried one about 500 feet and then forgot to bring something to strip the wire because I took that back up to the house, yeah, I heartily recommend it. Back in a minute. Okay, back with the knife. And finally, we're all set up. We've got the LED with an AV plug, that's two diodes back to back facing opposite directions and connected at one end. That's going to the 30 gauge wire all the way 500 and odd feet. And then the minus of the LED is going to this car alternator as a kind of virtual ground. So we'll go back up to the other end now and connect up and then see if this works. Right, here we are, let's connect up. Pull it right on and walk all the way <laughs> back again. Let's have a look at this. All right, nearly there. Do we have light? Is that LED going to be on? Will the ground work? All this and more coming up very soon. No, doesn't look like it. 
computer says no. All right, we're back up at this end. Got to test the coil. Oh, that seems to work. So we have got power. Hmm. Well, it's the following day. I tried loads of tests yesterday, yesterday evening, and couldn't get it to work. And I'm thinking it's got to be the joins in the wire. I don't know. All I've got now is some 40 gauge. But I'm going to run that. <laughs> Might as well. Right, there it is. There it is connected at this end. Now to trundle all the way to the other end. And we'll see if this works. Hopefully I don't snap it because it is a lot thinner wire. The end is in sight. <laughs> it made it. There must be a little bit left on that spool too. So, now we'll connect up and, and see if we get anything different. If not, it's, it's been worth a try anyway with the wire that I have got. Uh, 40 gauge should do worse than 30, but if 30 didn't work, you never know. This could, if that makes sense. And the result when connected up is unfortunately nothing. Again, computer says no. Well, good morning. It's another day, and something happened last night that was very strange. And of course, the camera battery ran out. So I'm going to see if it's the same today. I swapped over from the small coil to the original BAC big ass coil version, running from USB little power bank there. And something happened. I'm going to try and replicate. So first of all, let's see if this does. Oh, good morning, marmalade. So first of all, we'll switch on. There we are, showing the output. And we'll go and see if this one can do that distance. The first thing to note while we're walking down here is hopefully you can see this wire. This is the original 30 gauge. that has got five connecting points on it. We had to piece it together. But the other wire isn't, you know, with it, wrapped around it, anything like that. And it's a bit of a clue to to what's been going on or hopefully I can show. Here is the other wire in fact. So it's about 10, 12 inches away from the other one. We'll carry on walking. And here we are. And as you can see, that LED is partially lit. So the system does work to that distance. And I am very, very pleased with that result. If I hold the side, it does actually brighten up. So, this pseudo ground, as it were, which is the uh, the car alternator, it is it's doing something, but it's not as good as still human contact. And also bear in mind that uh, we've had about 95 degree days uh, since the shooting of the other video. We've got shallow soil here, so this is all rock hard. In fact, I did... I did put uh, a piece of copper in the ground and uh, first of all it, it was difficult to put in there. If I connect to it and have a look at the LED, again it does work. It is slightly on, but if I hold it of course it is a bit brighter. But it does mean that the ground still works. However, we do now have an option. I think I can put it to that one. Yeah. So the car alternator does work as an insulated ground. Now why is all of this weird? <laughs> the wire that's coming along from the system at the other end is the, is the uh, 30 gauge. But what's connected is this one. This is the 40 gauge. That's not connected to the other end. So this is the mystery. Where's that getting its power? Now what I'm going to do is swap over to the 30 gauge. Okay, in fact, I've kept the camera running because here it is. And then you can see there's no daft trickery or anything. This is the 30 gauge way. You can see it's slightly thicker. And there we are. That LED is on. I mean... How is this possible when I've only got one wire connected? <laughs> I've only got one wire connected. 
please do leave your comments down below what you think is going on with this setup. Only one wire connected, but two wires have got power. You know, I thought it might have been radio waves. There's some kind of really long antenna, and because it's insulated wire, enameled wire, I thought maybe that's it because I did show that these wires are not twisted round each other or something else to transfer the power from one to the other. All right, and here we are, and you can see the LED lit up nicely on there. And this wire is indeed the 30 gauge. The 40 gauge wire, and this is important, when I disconnected and what have you, I just took things off, threw the coil down. It's much larger. Here's your answer. There's the 40 gauge, which is running underneath the coil. It's not, it's not curled around or anything. There's the end of it. It was simply sat underneath the transmitting coil. And it's therefore been able to pick up the wireless energy through the coil from underneath, like that, <laughs> and transmit well over 500 feet. <laughs>